Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now, I'm sorry, I'm sweating. I look like I've just been swimming. It's about 90 degrees outside and I've just drunk a cup of tea. I don't know why, but us Brits cannot resist a cup of tea. 90 degrees, stick the kettle on. 100 degrees, stick the kettle on. Sunburn all over your body, 100 degrees Celsius, melting. Stick the kettle on, have a cup of tea. What's happened? Okay, so as you can see behind me, I'm installing the RX 480 drivers in my system because today I want to answer the simple question is the RX 480 still a graphics card worth buying in 2019? It's a first gen Polaris card and you can find it in the UK for about £100, around $100 and even €100. Euros. According to Bidvoy, I always use this site because it tends to give you the average price over the last week of so many listings either that have been auctioned off on eBay or have sold at buy it now prices. You can see there's a slight decrease in pricing, usually when it comes to auctioned items. So I think now seems like a pretty good idea to buy an RX 480. Now the one I'm using in today's one is the 8 gig version. But if your budget can't quite stretch to it, don't worry because the 4 gig version shouldn't differ too much in terms of the performance that you see today. It's just that with the 8 gig version, you may see a few extra frames here and there, and it will allow you to turn those texture settings up a little bit more as well. So here we have the Sapphire Nitro RX 480. I love the Sapphire versions of these cards. I think they look great. They look pretty standard at the front, but at the back, we've got a nice aftermarket backplate here. This one cost me 125 pounds, a little bit more than you may find one for on eBay, but this one was from CEX. It comes with a two year warranty, and it's one of the best versions of the RX 480 you could buy. It has eight gigs of GDDR5 VRAM. The rest of the specs are on screen for you guys now, and it also requires one eight pin connector. So, what can it do when it comes to modern AAA titles? Well, let's stick it in the system with the i5 8400, 16 gigs of 3200 megahertz RAM, and find that out right now. Now, with a used 480, the first thing I'd recommend would be to take it apart and replace the thermal paste, which often dries up on some models, and can sometimes have had more than a generous amount applied in the first place. It's something I picked up on when reading a few reviews from users who bought one second hand. Before moving on to newer titles, let's take a trip down memory lane and kick things off with GTA 5, a game that released on PC just a year before this card came out. You can see that even with everything on very high, apart from MSAA, the card handles Grand Theft Auto like a dream. For the current price on the used market, I think the 480 is probably one of the best options available, if of course it follows a similar price correlation in your country. So let's move on to the more modern stuff, and first of all we'll start with Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Now I've pretty much used 1080p with the high preset throughout, and in our first game here, we averaged 84 frames per second when paired with the i5-8400. With 1% lows and 0.1% lows of 50 and 22 respectively, you can see that performance stayed pretty decent throughout, although there will be one or two stutters here and there, and the card will touch 100% usage, which really is no big deal, and it just means it's being utilised to its full potential here. These figures also indicate that you may see a couple of dips below 60 frames per second, but for the most part across all of the maps, and depending on what you're doing, you should see at least 60 FPS on average. If you wanted to ensure that you don't see any dips below that, then maybe medium would be better, but I think 1080p high is certainly a safe bet. Now in Rust, we didn't use the highest graphical preset, but I did set things to the good preset. I believe that's a couple below the absolute highest. Again, 1080p. Um, performance was very good on the RX 480 here. At least 60 FPS throughout. In fact, we were getting closer to 80. Once again, it seems that the RX 480 is a good pairing for the i5-8400 when paired with this RAM as well, and it was a pretty decent experience overall. The card's not getting too loud, especially considering that I replaced the thermal paste before this video. I do like the big dual fans of the Sapphire Nitro Edition. In Battlefield 5, we saw a very similar average to that of Rust, around 80 frames per second. This was matched by pretty decent 1% and 0.1% lows, and this meant that we pretty much saw no stutter throughout the entirety of this Battlefield 5 level. Um, the frame rate should remain pretty decent no matter what map you are playing, and the same can be said for multiplayer. You're going to see at least 60 frames per second 
most if not all of the time with the 8 gig 480 in 2019. This really was a pretty decent result, as they have all been so far. Now Far Cry New Dawn, while it did give us a pretty decent average overall, there was some stutter here, but I think this actually has something to do with the i5-8400, although it doesn't look like it's really being utilised all that much. From my experience, Far Cry New Dawn does have issues with processors that feature more than four cores. I'm not sure why, and I'm not sure if it's a bug that will eventually get worked out, but you know, it's an Ubisoft title, anything can happen. But we did see a 1% load drop down to 15 FPS, and some stutters certainly were noticeable, but I thought I'd throw this game in here, because I felt like you needed to know about this. If you're using a six core CPU, whether it be an i5 or a Ryzen 5, anything like that, then, don't worry if you've got a 480 or you're planning on buying one. It's not that that will cause these stutters, in my opinion. It's a 6-core CPU. That's just from personal experience. I'm not sure if everyone's having these issues, but for me, 6-core CPUs and Far Cry New Dawn don't really work all too well together. So let me know, actually, down below in the comments if you do experience any similar problems with 6-core processors. Next up, we've got Just Cause 4. Uh, another personal favourite of mine to be honest, nothing beats just running around and messing about in this massive open world. Again, 1080p high settings, sort of pretty decent result for the RX 480. And just like the others in the series, you should have no problem in running this game with these settings on the 8GB card that we're using here. And this certainly is a more GPU intensive title. And finally, it's Metro Exodus. Usually I like to run this with the high settings, but here I had to opt for medium because this is probably one of the most demanding games that's came out in recent times. 55 FPS on average, which wasn't too bad. Running the benchmark test saw 1% and 0.1% lows of 27 and 23 respectively, which wasn't really that bad. They're quite close together, so there wasn't really many stutters to speak of. And the actual gameplay will differ quite a bit. Um, to the in-game benchmark test depending on what area of the game you're in as this is split up across many different levels that will each take different tolls on your system's hardware so just bear that in mind in some places you'll experience dips below 60 fps maybe even 30 fps but in others you'll see over 100 frames per second like at the start of the game itself when you're underground in the metro so with all of the game results out the way there i think that the RX 488 gig is probably one of the best used cards you can find at around 100 pounds dollars or euros but of course there are other things to consider like for example it's post mining history we live in a time now where a lot of RX 480s you see on the used market could have possibly been used in mining rigs because they were relatively low power and Remember that whole thing where the prices just shot up and no one could get a hold of one? Well, all of a sudden, we've seen an influx of RX 480s and 470s, for that matter, hit the market. So I think it's important to consider where or who you buy this card from. Now, places like CEX in the UK would be a good start because they offer a two-year warranty on all of their electric items. So if it does fail within the first, well... 24 months then you can take it back to them and they'll either fix it for you or give you a refund now in other countries where cex isn't available i think it's important just to be careful if you're shopping around on places like ebay for example if i'm buying or i plan to buy another 480 something like that i check that the seller isn't selling a lot of them if they're selling 20 then you know that the one you've purchased has probably been used in some sort of mining rig. But if in their selling history, for example, this is the only 480 that they've got for sale, then chances are it hasn't really been used to mine with. I'd also recommend, as I said before, replacing that thermal paste because it's something that seems to be a common problem with used 480s. Other options on the market if you're worried about picking up a used mining card could, for example, be a GTX 970 from NVIDIA, which again uses a little more power but performs quite closely. I think that whole 3.5 gigabyte VRAM issue may hold you back a little bit, especially when it comes to wanting to turn the settings up. Um, there will be some instances where the GPU struggles. And back on the AMD side of things, I think the R9290X would also prove to be a pretty decent choice. That's also got eight gigs of VRAM. And because it's quite power hungry, it's likely that 
it wouldn't have been used in many mining rigs and even today still performs quite well. Of course with the RX480 you do have that newer driver support and I think a 580 would also be a good choice if where you live it doesn't cost all that much more. But I think to wrap things up the 480 is still a pretty decent card. Prices are pretty low but that could be because of the whole X mining thing. But just be careful who you're buying from. For 60 FPS 1080p gaming it's still very capable when paired with something like an i5 or Ryzen 5 and for the money you're paying it seems to offer decent performance. Just be cautious of the background it may have been through. With all that said thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your constant support. Leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one. Just a quick side note. The Sapphire Nitro version here has this little feature which honestly made it a must have for me. I'm amused at the slightest things and this sealed the deal.